The legacy, I think, is that we change the narrative of shareholding. Uh, an institutional shareholding uh, gives you the right to engage a company. And if you are faith-based, to use your faith, based in your faith, to come and engage a company when you think they're doing things against people and the planet. If without our voice, who's going to be raising some of these questions? It would be a, a meeting, of a, uh, an annual meeting of a corporation would be just having the corporation executives get up, everything's fine, no problems. Well, when you're a company as big as ExxonMobil, for instance, or as Philip Morris, and as much impact as these countries do on the health of people and the planet, there's got to be an alternative voice that's only not just the profit voice. Maybe it's the P-R-O-P-H-E-T voice rather than P-R-O-F-I-T voice. We have the value that, no, when you play Monopoly, you know usually what's going to happen. And if you have no rules except winner take all, you know that's what's going to happen. And so we're saying these companies need another voice that is not going to be jeopardizing the bottom line, the financial bottom line. It's going to be do good and do well. We're in it to take care of our elderly, to educate our young people, to contribute to our ministries. So we're not just a bunch of do-gooders. We are doing good but we also are trying to do well. Well, the one lesson that I have yet to learn is to be calm and to be slick. I'm passionate, as you can see from this conversation. And I get intense on some of this stuff. And if I were a little quieter, a little slower, a little less intense, I tell myself, you'd have more impact, Mike. But then other people say, well, we like your passion. But um, I think that, again, it goes back to credibility and uh, acceptability that we have proven to be faithful to what we say we're going to do. Um, they know that if they don't engage us, they're going to see us at a shareholders meeting or have to fight us at the SEC uh, for filing a resolution. I don't want people hurt. Um, I don't want people exploited. Um, I don't want it for me. And it gets down to love your neighbor as yourself. If I had no voice and I was in trouble or being exploited and I knew someone was out there, was trying to do something, like that, that would mean a lot to me. And so um, it really is the great command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, all I know is that uh, the founder of my religion, Jesus, says that what we do to the least, we do to him. And I want to continue people being crucified and the planet being crucified. So if I can work with my province and my province can use me to bring good news to the poor and the planet, that's my mission. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.